how she got into acting, how she landed the role in Hudson and Rex, her time in Newfoundland, and how at first she absolutely hated Newfoundland, but, 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 for good reason. And she will explain that in this episode. We also talked to her about how does she work with the dog, um, her relationship with the dog, if there is one to begin with, and like what she's looking forward to in the show as it progresses. Oh, and a, one other big thing that we talk about that we kind of go back and forth on, and I would love to hear your opinion on this, the mobile unit. Now, for people who don't understand what the mobile unit is, if you've been keeping up with Hudson and Rex, you notice the first few episodes or seasons, they've kind of been in their own element. You know, each character has their own kind of scene, platform. Uh, but now it's more mobile unit. So mobile unit means more or less like they're all together trying to solve crimes. I kind of make a dig that it's like Scooby-Doo-ish. Scooby-Doo-ish. Uh, how does Mako respond to that? Uh, very honestly, very well. Very well. She kind of gives her input on it. I give my input on it. But curious to see at the end of this episode what you guys think. So as always, you can watch the full episode on TobinTonight.com. Thanks to Rogers for giving us this platform so you can see, obviously, bits and pieces of this episode put together. But feel free to reach out and let me know what you guys think of this episode or the mobile unit. Or reach out to Mako and tell her that, uh, hey, I was watching you on Toba tonight, and I'm totally on your side with the mobile unit. This guy's a loser. He's a loser. Anyway, while I take my confidence from here and bring it back down, why don't you enjoy this episode? Hit the music. bit about where you grew up and how you got into acting um so i grew up in bc i grew up in vancouver i was born in halifax um and i moved to vancouver probably when i was about eight years old and um uh i i got into acting when um i did a play in, in, in grade 10 grade 10 grade 11 <laughs> um so long ago um, I did a Midsummer Night's Dream and I never, it was the first thing that I'd ever done. And I think I just started drama classes and didn't really know whether, you know, I was neither here nor there about any of it. Um, and I, I had the tiniest part, I played Starveling and I had this, um, this paper, do we make him out of a Kleenex box or something? I had a dog. I can't remember, to be honest, if in the play Starveling has a dog, but for whatever, I had a dog and it was made out of this, this, um, like Kleenex box or something. <laughs> and, um, surprisingly, shockingly to me, myself as Starveling and the dog were very funny. And I've always been, you know, and I still have it, but I, I was very shy when I was younger. Um, and the fact that people would find me funny, um, especially when I wasn't intending to be, blew my mind. And 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 so that was that was my kind of first foray into it. And 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 yeah, I, I really I really dug it. How did you end up getting uh, this role on Hudson and Rex? Because I feel like you know, for however long this runs, this is what you're going to be more or less remembered for. Now again, you have been in Rookie Blue and other uh, projects, but. I feel like especially here in Newfoundland, people are going to be like, hey, if they see you on the street or see you out in public, they're going to be like, hey, I know where you're from. I've seen you on TV in Hudson and Rex. Yep. So tell me a little bit about how you got this role. Um, I mean, I wish I had a really exciting story around this, but uh, oh, I don't. No, no. I, don't. <laughs> um, I, I just auditioned for it. Like, you know, we get auditions. Um, I mean, you you know, you just get an audition and, and this one came up and um, I did it. Uh, I mean, what is interesting about the story is that um, I did the audition and I think it was, I mean, God, I don't even remember what year it was now, but it was earlier in the year. It was like January or February and I did it and I actually thought it went well. Um, but, you know, you never know with these things, even if they do go well, you know, who knows. Um, and then... And then I just didn't hear anything. 
I just didn't hear anything. And, and usually you wait a few weeks and you don't hear anything and you figure, you know, it, it's gone somewhere else. But I had heard that, um, that the project had been shelved. Okay. Which means that that always, that, that, that is an interesting one because it means that it hasn't gone away. I mean, it means that, that somebody else wasn't cast. It means that it, it got put away for a bit and who knows it could come back. And it did. I got a call in the summertime. So I didn't hear about it for months and months and months and months. And then I got a call in the summertime and um, they were interested in me. Um, and I had to do a bunch of uh, screen tests with some of the other actors and I never really knew whether I had the part. Like, I think I did. And again, like, nobody would confirm that I had the part. And then finally, finally, it was like a week before shooting. And, and then they were like, yes, we've got you and we've got everybody else cast. And I guess that often happens when they're not, you know, when they're trying to partner up different different players. Um, nobody wants to definitively tell you anything until they know who's yeah. going to match best with who. But, um, but then that was it. And I, I think the biggest thing for me was, was the news that we were going to go to Newfoundland because when I auditioned for the show, I, I didn't know that. Right. Like I had no idea that it was going to be shooting oh, wow. okay. outside of Ontario. I just assumed that it, you know, um, so it was interesting uh, because I found that out um to, when we were finalizing the details of, of my getting the part and uh, you know, and, and then that was a whole other thing because we thought we were going to be shooting the show for three months. Um, and then it turned into, we arrived here and then, and then it turned into a, a couple more episodes. So it would have been like four months. And then it turned into, I mean, I think we shoot six months now and sometimes oh, wow. depending on the weather seven. So so, but yeah, it, I just auditioned for it like like I would anything else. So, like, do you obviously now where you're in Newfoundland for that amount of time? Like, do you necessarily live here? Do you kind of rent a place here? Because I know what Justin's. I, I, well, I can't confirm it, but I know when we did the interview with Justin per se, Justin was in Ontario because they just wrapped up. I think we were. You just wrapped up season three. Yeah. Um, but like, I feel like in his situation, like he'll find somewhere to stay for that amount of time fly back and forth if he has to um yeah. but like in your situation is that the same or is it more or less like hey because i know you said that you were born raised east coast moved yep. to vancouver but like were you kind of excited to come to newfoundland and then be like oh you know what i'm gonna set up shop here or is it more or less like as long as we do the show i'm here but then i'm going somewhere else for when we're done well so this is the tricky thing so um when when I first got this job, and I think I've said this in a few interviews, um, I really had a hard time here. Also, oh, really? our show has a quick turnaround, right? So essentially, we live out here. Essentially, we go back home for about three or four months out of the year. Um, so we spend the majority of the year here. I have two children. Um, and so my partner and my, so my whole family is out here with me. And um, that was kind of the only option for us. You know, um, I think Justin and Kevin go back and forth. Uh, Kevin has a family and it's impossible for them to all move here. Whereas my kids are very young. So so it was easier for us to just all, all come out. Um, but initially, the first season I found really hard. Um, the other thing too is I don't have a license. And so the first snowfall here, because at oh. the time, Mike, my partner, he was going back and forth. And I remember uh, it was like October. It was like October and uh, it snowed. And I think, I think the snow was like, I don't know, it covered like a third of the window, which was high in October. And... I live right at the time I was living right downtown. I don't have a license. Everything is a hill here in St. John's. And so it was the first time I stepped outside and I realized um, that if Mike wasn't here, I was actually trapped inside the house because you can't stroll. You can't stroll no, around the city yeah. and carrying a baby because he was about two at the time carrying him was impossible it just felt so dangerous it's so slippery and it so so I had a hard time in the beginning and then weirdly enough snowmageddon was the thing that um that kind of made me come around and now so it's been about three years now this is absolutely our home um and and I feel like you know we've got two homes we've got our home in Toronto and there's our home here um we haven't been back 
um, because of the pandemic, we chose to stay here between seasons. So we haven't been back uh, to our Toronto home in a long time. It'll be a year and a half, I think, before um, since since we'll have gone back. And um, and it's a bizarre, it's a really bizarre thing because I've gotten so used to the pace here. And I'm nervous about going back to Toronto. I'm so excited to see my friends and family because that, that's a bit hard. But in terms of the city, yeah, I just, it's such an angry city and it's so abrasive and particularly post pandemic, you know, uh, so, so, so I, I'm, I am a bit, both myself and, and Mike are, are, are actually kind of dreading having to go back because we just it's been so long we feel like we don't even know what that city is anymore now we're into season four with Hudson mm-hmm. and Rex and I don't want to give away spoilers or anything for people who obviously want to keep up with the show but um I do know that we have because I'm just looking at the notes to make sure I got this right but yeah you have Peter Mitchell now as a show uh yes. showrunner um now he's been on I think it was like Frankie Drake Mysteries Murdoch Mysteries work yep. with them so I feel like this is kind of up his alley because it's mm-hmm. kind of like a show that involves um you know let's let's be honest murder and mysteries yep. but it's just a dog that helps out as well yeah um so like how does adding him uh kind of help with production helped with just the whole i like taking the show to a new identity because i know that there's also this mobile unit that became yes. a thing which yeah. um i will be honest with you uh, it's it's taken its time with me. I kind of you don't like, like the mobile oh, unit. I, I'm not a big fan of the mobile unit. Like you know what? For the first season, like the first season premiere of the or for this one for season four, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, this is cool. They're kind of on the road here. But then I was like, man, this is a little bit dragged out. And you know what? I have said it in Twitter. I wasn't taking anything away from the show. Still like it, but you know, everyone has an opinion. So I'm curious. So sorry. So I'm curious. Um, because I, I kind of forgot that the mobile unit was like a, a new thing. Because, you yeah. know, sometimes when you're in it, like, it, it, it just becomes moment. familiar so yeah. fast. Yeah. Um, so so what is it about? The, is it about um, the four of us kind of being on the scene more? Is it about, like, it being a bit more team effort? I feel like, I what, feel what like it, I, and I don't want to make, again, because people are going to be like, how dare you have her on the show? And then insult her. I'm like, oh my no, god, no. I like, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, everybody's got their own opinion, yeah. and I. Yeah. That's yeah, you have yeah, honesty than me, basically yes. say like, love the mobile care. unit, but uh, I don't even know if I love the mobile. Like, I've just yeah. not thought about it, so I haven't even formed my opinion. But, but I guess I'm, I'm asking only because. I, I just forgot you. that the mobile unit was like yeah. a, a new thing again because yeah. we're in it and we do it. It. Um, I also feel like I, of late, I don't know how much of the mobile unit we've done but yeah but but, but, I, but i'm yeah i'm just no no it's, it's fair. and then i feel like if peter mitchell ever watches this and then be like is that brian auditioning for a role for one of my things we're gonna have a lot of mobile units for that guy <laughs> but, uh, peter's very busy peter's very uh, busy um but no like I, I guess it's kind of to me it's kind of like you know some people like it some people don't but to me it's almost like very scooby-doo-ish like okay. and, and I Fair like Scooby Doo. I like Scooby Doo, but there's a point yeah. where it's like if it was for like one or two episodes, and again, it I don't know how long, but I'm like, okay, I get it. This is one where they they have to be all out in the open. But I remember watching the one where uh, it was one that uh, again I don't know the episode name, but it's recent where the cop was the bad guy that was supposed to be the the young cop that yes. befriends Nancy, and I was yes. like, man, this just seems very long like it seems like a very long scene but like the other episodes i could watch because the one that i really do enjoy down hawker one that he was in and the mary yes. walsh one you get different scenes you get different like places where scenes yes. take place and yeah. i kind of like the setup of having yes jesse can be involved and justin's gonna come after me and be like what are you trying to do take me off the show i'm like no relax but i liked him kind of in the computer you liked it separate yeah yeah and then like when he all did of get, us having our individual roles yeah and then when he did get involved places. Like with the episode, like the one where he kind of gets caught and the student ends up putting him in a pool. I was like, okay, see, that's what happens when you step outside when you, yes. your comfort zone, but totally. you're learning, right? So I feel like when it's the four of you all together, I'm like, okay, like I feel it's kind of either forced and it's outside your realms yeah. in terms of like, you're the Dr. Sarah. Yeah. I expect you to be more or less like, hey, this yeah. is what we did when you discovered this. When you're out in the field, I'm like, ah, What's going on here? <laughs> Listen, I mean, I, I, I feel like that viewpoint is totally valid and, and yeah. people will have their own individual responses. I'm, um, I, you know, it, it's hard for me to comment because I'm on the inside of it and, yeah. 
And as far as, so look, so when Peter came on board this year, um, I think the point was we wanted to change things up a bit creatively. Um, and I think there was a desire to, to make it more of an ensemble piece, an ensemble show. Um, and I will say that from the inside of it, I really enjoy it because uh, we all just get to work together more which yeah. for me it is fun um i also have different things to do which is fun so anyway so, so it's interesting and, and, and i'd be curious to check back in with you and see how you feel the rest of the season pans out because because the the goal is to pace the show up and, and, yeah. and to make it move and feel a bit more active so it's interesting that you describe no, no, a, feeling like that and, episode and, and, and it's yeah it's yeah it's not like slamming like peter for whatever like and I'm, that's I what i want to make sure because there because there's yes. people out there that will come like not that's like you know, a thousand people coming at me at Twitter, but there might be the one that's like, excuse me, what are you, are you Peter? And I'm like, I get what you're saying. It's just that everyone has their own insight. Like I have, everybody also everybody has their own opinion. Yeah, I have and favorite I movies. I have a favorite actor, but I also have that favorite actor who has crappy movies, but absolutely. you know, like, I feel like it, it's okay to find fault with a show like, or, or, or have your own preferences. And, yeah. and we are, we are doing things a bit differently this year. And I think that some people will love those changes and some people may not love those changes. Uh, I want to ask you too, cause it's an interesting question that we've asked um, Justin and I want to ask you as well, but like the working with the dog, cause I know that they've said in the Justin's case, he was like, it was very interesting. Of course, the dynamic of getting used to the dog. Um, I hope it's not spoiling it for like, I guess a younger audience who watches it, but it's like, you know, obviously there's someone there, Sherry, I believe that teaches the dog, the commands yeah. and stuff, but I, I get so enticed, which is good with shows because when you get so invested in the show or so in like watching it, I sometimes forget that it's not um, Reardon or in this case, you know, yeah. Hudson that really controls the dog. It's someone yeah. on the side that's, but you're so invested, like, man, it's like, I wonder if I seen a Hudson out in public, will he have Rex? And you're like, oh, wait, he wouldn't because they're two separate things. But yeah. how do you find working with, I guess, the dog or like that whole dynamic on this show? Um, I mean, so this is also another reason why uh, I like um, the change up this year, because I, I also historically i don't i don't have yeah, very exactly. much with rex usually um and i do get to work with him more and i definitely get to see more of the stunts which is a lot of fun um and you know it's funny so, so a couple things so a um i mean sherry is the mastermind sherry and her team victoria as yeah. well who's amazing but 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 you know what they get that dog to do i mean diesel is <laughs> Like I, I joke about this and it's not really a joke, but like I will go in to do ADR and I'll see clips of, you know, scenes that we've shot. And every time I see him do something, I mean, I also love dogs and I'm, you know, super gushy about dogs and kind of soft that way. But um, every time I see him do something, I just like tear up because I just think he's remarkable. Um, but 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 yes, it, it's Sherry who's like behind us calling out commands. I mean, sometimes it's us. You know, yeah. we've developed enough rapport where um, often if if Diesel needs to be giving, you know, myself or Johnny or Justin or either any of us looks, it's, it's us kind of off camera calling to him. And we make these, I don't know if anybody's told you this, but we make like funny sounds. And we'll be like... Bleh, 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 bleh. Diesel, yeah. diesel, 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 diesel. You know, like so. So we do partake in it a little bit, um, but um, but it is it is mostly uh, Sherry and Vic and the team. Um, I mean, you know, it's interesting. When we first started, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be awesome. We're going to have this dog. I'm going to get a cuddle with him." Blah blah. And it's not like that at all. No, no. Like, diesel only has eyes for Sherry. And like, really, like he's on set and that dog just traces where like his mama is. Wherever Sherry goes, Diesel's only got eyes for her. Now, if four seasons in, I, I feel like he's, I mean, I'll speak for myself. I feel like he's warmed up to me. I think I found some like sweet spots in terms of petting him. He really loves to be stroked on his nose. Um, and I feel like ever since I started doing that, he's kind of warmed up to me a bit. But, but really, he's just, he's 
he loves he loves sherry he loves his like sherry is his mama and so he really is just just wants her but but he has like you know now i feel like i i can kind of pet him and talk to him a bit and he doesn't like walk away like he'll, yeah, yeah. he'll tolerate me for a bit who, and then he'll walk you? away yeah. <laughs> but 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 so so it is funny because you you will get guest stars who are like so excited to work with him and i feel like of anybody diesel's probably the most professional like he's the most like i come i do my job Job, I hit my mark yeah. and then yeah. I go. The other, the, like to kind of clue it up because I, I, I do want to clue it up. Yeah. Uh, but it, I want to ask you just maybe a few more kind of fun questions here. And again, they're not like it's basically your opinion based too. But yeah. um, working with these people, like, have you ever sat down to watch? I know you said you don't watch a lot of TV, but like mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned this to Jesse. And if we ever have John on, I'd love to mention it to John too. But have you ever sat down to watch? Uh, Justin Kelly in the latest buzz or John in like the movie where he's actually like a ex professional player that now relies on this girl to like, basically, cause I look at that. My mom plays that movie a lot when it's on like lifetime or the W network. And I'm like, that's the guy from Hudson and Rex, but I know him from Hudson and Rex now, even though that this was an earlier role, but I'm like, yeah. that's so cool. But I even said to Jesse, I'm like, what about if you guys like revisited your past roles in an episode where it's like John, has that girl come in and be like, hey, I helped you when you were injured when you were pro when you were next. And I'd be like, that'd be kind of an interesting twist. <laughs> but have you ever seen um, them like in I'm, other roles than what they play? No, no. I mean, oh, part of that should. is part of I mean, you, you know, it, it's really funny that you bring that up because just this past week, we were joking in the green room between shots about how we should sit down we should we should each pick one of the things that we're like the most mortified by in terms of what yeah. we've done we'll each pick one of the ones that we've one of the shows that we've done that that we're just the most embarrassed by and and we should just sit and and watch everyone's um um everyone's pick uh so it's funny that you say that i mean it's never going to happen because we're also so busy and and but but oh, that would that, see it. but that would be yeah. a fun thing to do. But we but we have definitely talked about it. We've definitely yeah. talked about it. And I we've feel definitely like, I feel talked like about the different projects that we've done where we're like, ooh, don't know why. I feel I like that. that's what you should do. Like as a like I know when they go on like um Twitter, because obviously the show is Hudson and Rex. People want to see like Rex updates because he's the dog. But mm -hmm. I would love to see ones mm -hmm. where it's like on Twitter, even if it's like just a five second clip or five minute clip, I should say, where it's like, that's hey, true. it's like uh here's john and uh justin and they're gonna watch the latest buzz and then just watching justin's reaction to like some of the stuff that he said or did on the latest buzz and be like, yes please yes. turn this off i'd be like no 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 this wait be a good, john gets his be a fun turn thing. <laughs> yeah john gets this his would, turn to <laughs> this would be hard to do because it's really hard watching yourself on on anything let alone watching yourself <laughs> suck or do something stupid um but it would it, but it would be it would be fun what are you talking about, Meku? I do it all the time. I'm like, I watch these podcasts over and over. Like, man, I thought you would it's be getting worst. better with age. It's the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watching yourself. Some, wants some to be hear like, some like, you did, yourself. you did fine. You did fine. That interview. I'm like, yeah, but look at me. I'm like, <laughs> like, did I? Or are you just being nice? Um, the last kind of question I want to ask, and then we'll do a few plugs at the end okay. here. But, um, what are you more excited, like most excited about in this season that you've either done so far or that you're looking forward to doing? I know it's kind of like a two-sided question, but take your time. No, I think that's an easy one for me. I, it's going back to what we were talking about before. Um, being able to move, uh, and again, I, I can't really say too much uh, in terms of details, but uh, there is movement. There is there is um, development in terms of the Charlie Sarah relationship, and being able to finally do something with that uh, is, is so nice. It's so nice. It's so nice because a, I, I feel like we owe that to the audience because everybody's been, you know, waiting to see what's happening. And, but, but it also feels nice because again, it, it's, it's, it's always fun for me to, to reveal some of Sarah's personal side, her, her person rather than, you know, her, what she is at work, you know? Yeah. Um, um, and, and I, I, and, and also because all of that is new to me, right? Like when I, I don't know where Charlie and Sarah are going, so I'll get a script and I'm like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, exactly. So, so it's fun for me to, to, to see what's happening with that. So, so that is what I'm, I think, the most excited about this season. 
That's going to do it for this episode of Tobin Tonight. Our thanks to Mako Wynn for coming on to the show. Remember, you can find past, present, and future episodes on TobinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying, thanks for listening, and good night. program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content